tell you about my shady driving history. You see, because I spent so many years growing up in England, I never learned how to drive until I was 20. Picked up my first car on my 20th birthday, a used Ford Tempo. I lasted less than six months before I got my first DUI when I was 20. And then, within one month of getting my license back for my first DUI, I got my second DUI. At which point, I wasn't very well equipped to deal with that second DUI. I couldn't afford the probation costs, couldn't be bothered to take the classes. So instead, I moved across country to live with my sister in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I hid from my legal problems for a good five years. But then I wound up moving back to Florida, squared away all my, my problems with the law, and I got a new car, a Mercury Grand Marquis, which I wound up driving across the country to move to Los Angeles in 2001. But in 2002, I got pulled over in Beverly Hills by a cop who said I was doing enough wrong with my expired tags, my suspended license, my no insurance, that he had to arrest me. But he said he liked me, so he got special permission to arrest me and release me on the spot. He said I couldn't drive my car, though. He said that, that uh, he had to tow it, so he called me a cab. Well, when that cab took off with me in it, I waved at the car, I waved goodbye, because I knew I wasn't ever going to bother fucking getting that thing back. And I knew I wasn't ever going to bother going to damn court, which I didn't. Which is why I had a warrant out for my arrest for fucking seven years, man. Fortunately for me, though, there was no warrant out for Steve-O. <laughs> which is why I didn't give a fuck, man. It was too important to me to get loaded all the time to fucking drive. So, I just didn't drive. I didn't own a car for seven years. Had a warrant out for my arrest, took, took taxis everywhere. Cops are always like, say, yeah, hey, what's up, Steve-O? You know, and like, one time I even asked these cops uh, if, if they could look up my warrant. And they said, yeah, dude, you're hot for 10 Gs. Have a good night. <laughs> that was pretty wild. But then I wound up getting in a lot of trouble, going to rehab and this and that. And once again, I squared away all my legal problems. And that was when I got my Nissan Versa. A lot of people would think, Steve-O, man, you could drive a nicer car than a Nissan Versa. But I didn't care, because I wasn't even used to owning a car at all. So, I mean, fuck, I was so happy with my Nissan Versa. Drove that son of a bitch for six years. Then, recently, I decided it was time for me to get a new car. I'm not going to say what car I even thought about getting, but I will say that before I got done with the Versa, I was going to be goddamned if we weren't going to make a fucking video out of bitch-ass skateboarders skateboarding all over it. Yeah, which is with, where the idea for the skate bonanza came into play. And oh boy, did we have a skate bonanza. By the time we got done with that Nissan Versa, I replaced the front windshield twice back windshield once. Hell, it doesn't have a goddamn bumper no more. That fucking thing's fucked. But you think I was gonna throw it away? Hell no. I wasn't gonna throw away the Nissan Versa. Instead, I gave it to my fucking my heterosexual life partner, best friend and comrade, Scott Randolph, international star. Yeah. A lot of people would say that's kind of a dick move to beat up a car like that and then give it to your buddy. But I don't see it that way, neither does Scott. Isn't that right, Scott? Yeah. <laughs> I think I told a pretty good story there. What did I leave out? Oh yeah, we can't fucking call this project over with until we get the Nissan Versa and blow up some damn fireworks. <laughs> Woo! The ceremonial passing of the Nissan Versa with this artillery shell. Oh! <laughs> Nissan Versa! Woo! <laughs> oh shit! Fire! Seriously burning, dude! I think that's good. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>